Let's uh, start off in actually in Green River, where we uh, met up, where Mike Hagen and I met up there. And then on Monday, and then on Tuesday, we made our way then into the northern part of the swell. We took the um, Green River Bypass Road that took us out uh, through some pretty stretches of driving. That was me, sorry. That was okay. I, uh, it, that went on for lots and lots of time. I, I, I kept on thinking, I wonder when he's gonna realize that his mic is keyed. Well, if he didn't hear me fart, then we're good. <laughs> Careful, this is being recorded. and then ended up at the wedge. Uh, we got there early, about noon, and I'm kind of getting used to this uh, early setup, camping, relaxing uh, kind of idea of overlanding. I think it's uh, doing me very well. So we, uh, we talked away in the afternoon, and uh, then we sat down, and uh, based on what I was gleaning from our conversation, um, we had a little chat. So you and I have been talking, yes. uh, and I got a little bit of your background on uh, just starting out with this, and it sounds like uh, American Outback and Mark were pretty instrumental in getting you rolling it. Yes, definitely, it, very much so. Obviously it started when I got invited to join American Outback and I did so. Um, and then I was able to hook up with Mark Dorian and I got to go on one of his adventures in Oklahoma. Uh, his video's out there on YouTube, the, the Trans-American Trail, Oklahoma. Yeah, up at a lake up here. And um, uh, got to know Mark real well. So you've been an avid off-roader, 4 by 4 Jeeper. Jeeper. Yeah. For what, 40 years? Yeah, 86. So there's an obvious attraction to overlanding. Yeah. As far as off roading is concerned. But yeah. uh, so, how is this different than what you were used so, to? So, when I started in 86 with a Ford Bronco, I started getting into the rock crawling aspect of four wheeling and going to the harder places like Moab, Las Cruces, Farmington, areas that really got into the rock crawling. And, and even though that full-size Bronco wasn't designed for that, that's what my craving was. So after I got rid of the Bronco and ended up getting a Jeep, uh, uh, an, an AMC CJ7, and built that into a what we, we considered a trailer queen because it was not street legal. I had to trailer it around. And, um, but because it wasn't street legal, and at one point I lost my truck, my ride, it was a company-supplied vehicle, um, I decided to sell the Jeep. And I was four-wheel drive less for years. <laughs> right. And um, uh, I got another Bronco just to have, but it really was, it was a 96 Bronco and it really, it, it, it didn't make, it wasn't the 86 Bronco. Anyway, so um, uh, I decided on, on getting an FJ Cruiser. And it's, it's, it's a nice four-wheel drive vehicle. It'll go pretty much anywhere it wants, but it, with the independent front suspension, it just doesn't have that solid axle feel. And so I, I don't really want to take it on the hardcore. I guess my, my personality changed a little bit growing up, growing older, getting slower, getting weaker, um, and wanting to do uh, overlanding on this type of terrain. But you get, you get uh, technical, though. I know yeah, you do. We're going to yeah. get technical tomorrow. Yeah, there are bit. some places where you have to climb steps and yeah. stairs. And, and yeah, you've got to put in four low. And, so. But, is the solid axle now? I know the difference between solid axle and independent front suspension. I think. What do you feel? Uh, my, on my FJ Cruiser, I'll lift. A, I'll, I'll catch air under the front end all the time. Okay. The the flexibility, it's it's not there. Pretty limited. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, if I, uh, it's not uncommon to go through a a, a a twist up area where your front end is this way and your back end is this way. And then next thing you know, you're up in the air. Yeah. We call it crossed up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so with two solid axles, front they rear. tend to sway and be a little bit more flexible, especially if you have disconnecting um, um, uh, and sway bars. Sway bars. Yeah. And 
I could do that on the FJ, but then it gets really crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, uh, you're, you're messing with yeah geometry there. Yeah, in maybe way. So I just decided because I was older, I was in my 60s, that I'll just get a vehicle that was is capable, but uh, I'll just lessen the the stress. This morning at breakfast, though, as we walked into the Tamarisk, yeah, you said, "This is why I do this for the camaraderie." Uh, I crave that camaraderie that the four-wheeling community and the overland community uh, has. Um, in my overland community, there are more people my age. The four-wheeling community, there's a huge gap. There's 20-year-olds, yeah. there's late teens, 30, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40, and, you know, and, and also retired guys, but not so much retired guys. Overlanding, there seems to be a lot more retired guys. Um, American Outback with uh, Mark Dwaron, the founder of that, certainly has, has brought you and I together. We met yeah. at American uh, Outback Expedition 2. Yeah, camp out, yeah. At Nizoni and uh, yeah. north of Blanding there. You showed me a trick, though, today. I know you've talked about this in another yeah. video, but. Yeah. I have a gazelle uh, hub tent, uh, and the hubs pop out. If you've never seen it, it go to the YouTube and look it up. It's cool. It, it, your tent, you can set it up or take it down in about 90 seconds. But uh, I discovered that to hammer the stakes in, in hard, dry Colorado soil, where I live in Colorado, uh, I just couldn't do it, you know, and I just, and, and getting on my hands and knees and trying to put in a stake, you know, it, it, I was limited. So I was thinking, well, what if I got, went down to Lowe's and I bought some eight inch lag bolts, three quarter inch nut, Got a big flat fender washer on it. Put it in the eyelet. Get a three eighths impact wrench with this right size socket and just right into the ground. And so tomorrow when we pack up, I'll reverse it and bring it right out of the ground. The soil here on top of the wedge, it's a little tough. Uh, the dirt is on top of rock. So I wasn't able to go all the way in, but I, was, I got some of them in. But then the uh, uh, soil at the Nazoni campground where we had that American Outback 2 camp, uh, camp out. Man, it was hard, but it went right in. Yeah. So tomorrow we're going to uh, hit the, the east end of the wedge of this area here, and maybe do some drone shots and uh, some of the photography there. And then we're gonna head on down to Buckhorn uh, Wash. We're gonna stop by and, and look at some um, petroglyph panels. We'll get down into uh, the Swayze cabin and then come up through Eagle Canyon through there. And then uh, at that point, we'll hit I-70 and then we're going to kind of go our different way. So we'll, we'll have some footage about that. Mike, it's been a real pleasure yes. to uh, to roll with you here and to get to know you better as well. Yes, it's been thank a lot you. of fun to go through and do that. Yep. Well, like I said, the last video I watched uh, that you did, uh, you said something about going up to the San Rafael Swell. And I remembered that. And so that's why I emailed you and said, hey, when are you going to go to the Swell? Let's do it. It was a, kind of a breezy evening, but I was able to get uh, some uh, drone footage of uh, the little Grand Canyon area of the wedge. And uh, then we just had a nice, uh, another nice chat, had some dinner. Um, Mike had the package stroganoff and I decided I would make the um, homemade variety and do more cooking on this kitchen that I have built in the back of the, of the rove and put it to better use than what I've been doing other than just boiling the water the whole time. So uh, after dinner, we uh, um, and after our interview, we just had uh, a nice little fireside chat, watched the sunset, and then uh, and then retired for the evening. Today, then we left the wedge. Uh, as you can see, it's gotten overcast, and uh, decided to uh, move our way onto uh, the Buckhorn Wash Road, and uh, visited some uh, rock art. Uh, petroglyphs and uh, and painted rock art, which is always fascinating to me to go through and see uh, that kind of history that's germane to this area. Wish I could decipher what it meant, you know. And then from there, let's see, we, uh, well, then we made our way to Swayze, Swayze Cabin or the Swazi Cabin. I'm not sure if it's Patrick Swayze or Swazi, how it's pronounced that way. I'm sure somebody here will go through and, and help me out with that. We had lunch there. And then from that point, we got into Eagle Canyon, which is a little on the gnarly side. 
Um, Mike's FJ did a great job going through there. Well, Mike did a great job piloting the FJ going through there. I love this area. Going under the uh, the bridges at Eagle Canyon, under the uh, I-70 east and westbound lanes, and then got into some more technical terrain. Coming up uh, onto the north side of I-70, and then through the uh, antenna scraping tunnel, and then uh, and then to the rest stop here, and that uh, pretty well summed it up. So. Um, good trip, and if you have any questions about navigating or anything having to do with the San Rafael Swell on this side, uh, feel free to, to post them up, and I'll be happy to go through and, uh, and answer that. And if you've yet to subscribe, please do that uh, as well. Mike Hagen, thank you. I appreciate your help and your accompaniment here along this trip, and so does my wife, Mindy. She's, uh, you know, we're, we're both a little shy about me traveling solo these days, so uh, it was great to have you along and great to get to know you uh, a lot more there as things go. So um, we'll see you on the next episode. Not sure what that's gonna be. I got a few bugs to work out on the rope, and maybe I'll go through and cut something that way. Uh, and then, um, like I said, the 5th of May, we'll be meeting up with the guys from American Outback. Um, and uh, to do a, another tour, this time of the southeastern part of the square. So until then, keep that shiny side up, okay? Thanks for watching. <laughs>